Welcome, this is John Epps. I'm with the Texas A&M Transportation Institute at Texas A&M University. And I'm Dennis Berryhill, the statewide SILCO coordinator for Texas, and I work out of the maintenance division. Today we're gonna to talk about brief 20-05, and this is a brief on distributor calibration and measurement of asphalt binder distribution rates. This brief is available to you on two different websites. One is for TxDOT employees only, as shown at the top of the slide, and the other is for all users, potential users of this brief. It is the Tex APA website, texasasphalt.org, uh, with uh, some finding information after that. You will not only find the brief on those websites, but you will find PowerPoints that accompany those briefs. You'll find today's video and the slides that accompany the video. We're gonna talk uh, again about calibration methods, quality control and quality assurance, shot rate determinations, and present a summary at the end of this presentation today. The importance of calibrating an asphalt distributor is many fold. We certainly wanna have a distributor calibrated so we can accurately determine the shot rate of the asphalt binder. We wanna determine the uniformity of the shot rate of the asphalt binder as well. We wanna make sure that it's not only the overall quantity is correct, but also it's uniform transversely and longitudinally. We wanna maintain this shot rate during our construction process as well. And we wanna determine the quantity of asphalt binders for payment and the information collected that we'll talk about today will help us do that. There are several calibration methods that are available to us to determine asphalt shot rates. These are identified in item 316, which is the specification for seal coach used device TxDOT Department of Transportation. It's in section 3.1.3. One of the sections is point two of that, and that talks about distributor tank calibration. There's a section point two in that that talks about the verification of the tank calibration. That provides the engineer with the opportunity to calibrate the tank anytime during the construction process. And then there's a third process, the transverse distribution of asphalt and that's identified in section 3.1.3.1. The calibration methods are referred to in TxDOT test method 922-K part one, two, and three. The distributor tank calibration method is part one. To verify the tank calibration is in part two. The spray bar calibration is in part three. There's a fourth method listed here, which is an ASTM D2995 method using absorbent pads. And this method allows both the transverse and longitudinal distribution rate to be determined uh, in one process. Tank uh, calibration method uses water to calibrate that a known amount of water is put into the tank and the depth of that water in the tank is recorded. Again, additional water is introduced in the tank and the depth of the water. This has continued to give us a calibration graph that gives us the tank uh, volume for a certain depth of water in that tank. The serial number on the tank has to be placed on the stick that is used to calibrate this. The description of the distributor is also provided. It has to be sealed by a professional engineer and the calibration is required every five years. The bar nozzle calibration procedure is shown here. The containers are placed uh, under each nozzle the nozzles are turned on for a prescribed period of time and the quantity of the asphalt binder or water is measured in each of those particular containers. So the weight sprayed by each nozzle is again determined. A graph of the asphalt weight sprayed by, for each nozzle across the bar is recorded and the deviation from the average for each nozzle is calculated. The specification requires that individual nozzle deviations be limited to no more than 10% from the average. Text 922K part three is the distributor calibration and it has to be again witnessed by TxDOT engineers. The water uh, or asphalt binder can be used in this particular process. Absorbent pads ASTM D2995 are used by a few districts to determine both transverse and longitudinal distribution rates. Absorbent pads are placed on the pavement a graph of the distribution transversely and longitudinal is prepared and this can be used with any type of asphalt binder. It's easier to run it with asphalt cements that is hot applied binders as compared to cutbacks and emulsions. This is a summary of the calibration requirements and recommendations. 
Tank calibrations are required every five years according to 922K Part 1. Tank verifications can be done at any time as directed by the engineer, and that's part two of that specification. And transverse distribution is measured once a year according to text 922K Part 3. And again, the absorbent pads are recommended for use to determine longitudinal and transverse variability. Dennis is going to talk about quality control and quality assurance types of activities associated uh, with this process. Thank you, Dr. Epps. We're going to look at the uh, quality assurance during construction. Uh, there are three bullet points as you see. First is visual inspection pre-construction, visual inspection during construction, and the measurements during construction. And we'll get a little more in depth in this and, and discuss the importance of it. So the visual inspection pre-construction, uh, before you start uh, sealing on the first day, uh, hopefully your contractor will come in and, and you'll, you can do this a day or two before, but sometimes it's gonna be the day of. Uh, but you need to look at your asphalt distributor. You should have a checklist. We've provided that uh, through di uh, several different methods to you. Uh, so you need to look at these distributor checklists uh, look at your spray bar heights, uh, uniformity of your spray bar, make sure that it's level, uh, make sure that, that it, it's not lower or higher on one end or the other. Uh, you need to double check your nozzle size, the angles and the wear. Uh, look at the condition of the pump and the filters. Uh, also, check the uh, distant measuring device. M make sure that we don't have any issues there. Uh, you can check this. Uh, uh, by using another measuring device and uh, then checking it with the distributor to make sure they match. General operating conditions of the equipment. Just make sure it, it, it's safe to be on the highway. Make, make sure that the distributor is in good working condition. So we talked about the distributor checklist. And the next few slides, we're going to be going through this checklist. And I want to uh, show you on this one, the general, it says record the serial number, number, model, and any other required information. You want to make sure that you can identify that distributor and that you know uh, what each one, uh, what the results are on this checklist. Uh, there's some other things here that you need to look at. I'm not going to go through each one word for word, but you do need to look, uh, make sure you have your calibrations. Uh, you know, Look at the visual inspection uh, inside the tank if possible. Uh, take a look at, at, at the heater units. Uh, make sure that they're operational and, and that there's no obvious issues with those. Probably a couple of the most important things is the thermometers because you're going to need to check the temperature of your asphalt very regularly. So make sure that these uh, thermometers uh, are, are, have been calibrated. They're not cracked or broken. Uh, you need to make sure that they are in contact with the liquid. Uh, make sure that you're getting a good reading from these thermometers. Also look at the pumps. Uh, make sure you don't have any leaks. Uh, you, you need to be listening to these uh, uh, pumps as well. A lot of times you can pick up issues just by the sound that they make uh, and, or the difference in sounds that they make. We talked earlier about the spray bar. Uh, you, you need to make sure that, that we look at this, we measure it, make sure it's level, uh, make sure that, that all of the nozzles are in place, make sure the nozzles uh, are, are not worn and that they are in good shape and that they're the same uh, type and size, unless of course that you're using a, a transverse uh, uh, sp spray pattern and that you actually want reduced uh, rate in the wheel paths. Um, but very important to make sure that the spray bar works uh, properly. Again, you want to look at those spray nozzles and make sure that they're, they're in good shape, they're not worn, uh, that they're not gouged or, or have any defects in them. Uh, you also want to check this nozzle angle. It should be 30%. And there's a special wrench that comes with each distributor that uh, whenever you place it on, on the nozzle and you take the handle and touch the one next to it, it automatically sets it at 30 degrees. 
You need to look at the fan width, make sure that, that uh, there's not an issue with pressure. If you notice some fans that are, uh, that are more narrow or, or wider, then you probably have a, a pressure problem that you need to check into. Uh, the nozzle output, then again, you could you look back at uh, test method 922K, and uh, you, I think you need to look at this information that, that you're presented with and make sure uh, you don't see any issues there. Uh, transverse variation, uh, you need, you need to, to check that it, if it's applicable, if you are going to shoot uh, uh, differing uh, asphalt rates in the wheel path. One thing we want to make sure that everybody understands is the safety during inspections, not only pre-construction, but during construction as well. These distributors have a lot of moving parts, uh, can be easy to get clothing caught in these pumps. Uh, high temperatures, most time, or a lot of the times you're using uh, AC materials. Uh, that, that are around 350 degrees. So you need to be very careful. Uh, you need to inspect it as well as you can, but just, just be aware that, that the, especially the bar and, and areas around those pumps are going to be extremely hot. Also, if you do climb up on this uh, equipment, make sure you use three points of contact. Some more visual inspection during construction. This is very important. Uh, this is something that we should be watching almost every shot. Uh, we should pay uh, close attention because this is what's going to help give us a quality seal coat program is checking that spray bar height. You know, that's something we ought to look at every, uh, every shot. Uh, nozzle size, the angles. Uh, the angles is going to be very important during construction because they can get moved. Uh, so we need to be looking at this when a distributor takes off. If we identify any bad angles, we need to stop and get it fixed. Uh, fan width and uniformity. If you notice any, any variations or anything that's different uh, throughout the day, stop and take a look at it. Might get the contractor to, to investigate what the issues may be. Uh, triple overlap of fans is very important to avoid streaking. Uh, and that go, one of the things that goes back to is bar height. So that's something that we should be checking throughout the day. Measurements during construction. Uh, this is very important to help check that we're getting the right uh, shot that, or shot rate that we want. And if you don't accurately measure this, you're not going to be accurate and you're not going to know exactly what you're getting. So you want to check the tank volume before and after the shot by using the float gauge. Uh, you can use computer readout. You can actually the, the strap stick that comes with a distributor and you need to compare these. Uh, you need to double check and make sure the width and length of your shot's correct and, and also record the temperature of the binder. Now we're going to look a little bit at shot rates and for this we're going to go to Dr. John Epps. Shot rate needs to be determined uh, after each shot and the plans and specifications identify a shot rate on those. That shot rate may not be the shot rate that's actually used on the project. The project shot rate should be adjusted for the type of actual binder that's being used, temperatures being sprayed, and some other factors that we'll discuss in a minute. And also, in particular, the type of aggregate, grade of aggregate, shape of aggregate, etc. So the plans and specifications is an estimate of the shot rate that you want to use on a project and the project binder rate is dependent upon a number of factors. It is certainly recommended that the modified Kirby method be used to design the aggregate quantities and give you an idea of the binder quantities. And then it should be adjusted for field conditions. The experience of the inspector or the engineer on the projects is extremely important in setting these binder rates that we're gonna be using on a particular project. We define shot rate in terms of gallons of asphalt applied per square yard of surface of the roadway. And this is the common thing that is used by all folks in the field. So it's gallons per square yard of pavement surface is the shot rate unit. Again, shot rates on the plans are estimates only, and they need to be adjusted in almost all cases for the actual project, the aggregates and the asphalt binder you're using. Item 316 of the specification does talk about uniformity. The distributor applying a uniform at specified rate is directed. 
It should be uniform. It should not have streaking, ridging, puddling, or flowing, according to 4.8.3 specification item. And three consecutive shots cannot differ by more than 0.03 gallons per square yard. One shot differ by more than 0.05 gallons per square yard. Typical shot quantities are in the range of 0.3 to 0.45 gallons per square yard. So these are the deviations from those numbers that are allowed in the specifications. Three consecutive shots and one shot differing by more than the quantities going here. Shot rate adjustments need to be made on the projects. It depends on the type and grade of the asphalt binder actually used, the type and grade of the aggregate actually used on that particular project, the traffic volume on the roadway, and the condition of the existing surface on the roadway is important as well, and certainly the time of year. These are the major factors that are utilized to adjust shot rates. Temperatures. Communication of gallons per square yard for your shot rate is dependent somewhat on temperature. It is very common to always give shot rates at the elevated spray temperatures we're going to use on a job. For example, if a hot applied binder is going to be used, we might say shoot it at 0.35 gallons per square yard. And that means that it's going to be shot at 0.35 gallons per square yard at an elevated temperature. Almost all communication on a job is at an elevated temperature for shot rates. However, when you do go through a design procedure, the design procedure gives you shot rates at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and they must be adjusted for temperature. It is extremely important that you have clear communications when you discuss the shot rates on a project. The safe thing to do is always convert shot rates to the temperature that's going to be used on the project. The shot rate can be determined fairly easily. It's simply the volume of the asphalt binder utilized on a particular shot divided by the surface area that that shot covers. And this needs to be a pretty accurate estimate of what we're being shot there. In an equation form, it's the volume of the asphalt shot in gallons that is going to be coming out of the distributor for a certain area of the roadway shot, and that area shot is in square yards. To put this in a, a more uh, uniform equation here, we have volume of asphalt shot in gallons divided by the length of the shot times the width of the shot. Those are typically measured in feet, and we divide it by nine to convert a square feet to square yard, and that's what the nine is in the equation for. So if you use this equation, you'll come up with a shot rate. Here's an example. The volume of the asphalt shot determined from the strap was 1,840 gallons for that particular shot. The length of the shot was 4,200 feet. The width of that shot was 12 feet. So we take the 1840 gallons divided by 4,200 feet and 12 feet, which is the area, we use the nine to get it into square yards, from feet to square yards, and we come up with 0 0.329 gallons per square yard. Conventionally in the field, we report this as 0 0.33 gallons per square yard. In summary, uh, there's a number of factors that we want to leave you with, and Dennis will do that. Thank you, Dr. Epps. We've discussed in this video today the, the importance of the calibration procedures and making sure that these are done. Uh, if you have the opportunity as a textile employee to witness these uh, procedures, you should do so. Uh, re remember that uh, Texas, Texas 922-K are required, AST, ASTM D2995, the absorbent pads are recommended, but they are not required. Uh, you need to make sure that, that you're doing your visual inspections, both pre-construction and during construction. Uh, these are going to be very important to, to getting a quality seal coat product. Um, the asphalt distributor rate is very critical to the performance, so we need to make sure that we're paying particular detail to this operation. I want to thank you for watching this video today. And I hope that we give you some tools to help improve the quality of the Seal Coat program in your district. Once again, thank you and be safe.